I want to share with you um, a story because this story changed my mind and because I think it could also impact in yours, on yours. Well, I'm sorry for the guys, but I'm inviting you to imagine you are a young girl dreaming of her future. Most probably, you dreamt that one day you will be Snow White. Oh, doesn't work. Sorry, Snow White, or maybe Scarlet O'Hara, or maybe Sherazad. But most probably also, one day, you decided to be serious and to have a real job. And that's how you become a neurologist. <laughs> <laughs> and you are, many years later, you are a professor of neurology, you are expert in terrible diseases like Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, at your loose hours, because you want to be a complete neuroscientist, you obtain a certificate of biology, you spend nights and nights writing scientific papers, building projects for fundraising, and you don't know how, but you find time to have two kids and to raise them according to humanist principle. And when you attain this stage of your career, you are now very helpful to people because of your edu education as a neurologist, but also because almost everything is available around the corner for your patient. You also think that you're with your skills, with what you have seen during your life of neurologist, you almost have seen what, all what is human misery and suffering. And one day, the impossible happens. Revolution in Tunisia, followed by revolution in Libya. The story I was telling to you is mine. I have a 17-year-old daughter who dreams of humanitarian actions. Because of that, and because at that very moment of the revolution, our country, the south of our country, had become a vast refugee camp, I decided to go with her to the south Tunisia, to Ras Jir, to the refugees camp. F as for my personal motivations, I thought, like all neurologists, because we treat the noblest organ of the body, that we are very powerful. And I felt myself like a superwoman with superpowers, going and flying to help the refugees with their terrible neurological diseases. But we, and when we arrived at the refugees camp, we found situations TV images did not prepare us for, did not tell us enough on. We found thousands of people gathered to wait the call of their name to go back to their homes. We found hundreds, hundreds of meters of lines of people waiting hours under harmful sun to be called for their lunch, to be served their lunch by volunteers. We found hundreds of babies and ladies eyes wide open, full of images of terror. Sometimes we even heard noises of riots starting between people for almost nothing. During that stay, I've seen a lot of things I would never have seen all my life. But no Parkinson's disease, no Alzheimer's disease, no epilepsy. People here didn't need a neurologist. At that moment, I realized that I was facing the cruel, what is called the cruel enemy of arts, sophisticated arts and science, and civilization, which is the Maslow pyramid of human needs. You cannot imagine satisfying the highest levels of these pyramids like I wanted to do if you have not satisfied the basic ones. Actually, peoples, uh, people at Ras Jdir needed basic things. They needed to be fed, to be heated, to be clothed, to be covered, to be loved. And I felt I was realizing that I was uh, in front of a situation where my powers uh, were made weakness. 
I was realizing that I was endlessly powerless in front of these people's, uh, people and this situation. I re realized that, indeed, I didn't know that much on human misery and suffering, because the misery of refugees is, is the bitterest one. And while this brainstorming happened in my mind, I observed my daughter dealing with the same situation. She was facing things with, ca with calm. She was caring for a thirsty baby with, with, with love. And seeing this, I just took a breath and decided to forget all my complicated skills and to go back to the basis of the care, which is helping in everything needed, when it is needed, whoever needs it, and whatever is the need. And actually, I realized that I was curing problems, not neurological problems for which I'm skilled. But anyway, I was helping some, somebody in uh, any manner. And this, while, while I felt before that endlessly powerless, made me feel again powerful. And I spent a lot of time doing what I have had to do uh, as basic care. At the end of the stay, we went back with my daughter. We went home, and we were, our minds were stretched by this experience. And this experience had, has built an arch upon, uh, upon which uh, our relation as daughter-mother was more unbreakable. And last but not least, hours of brushing tents brought me back to my beloved neurosciences, because it brought back to my it brought to my mind the idea, the Eureka idea, the solution for the next research project I was building with my group. So the takeaway lesson for me is that whatever you feel powerful. It happens that one day, when you are out of your zone of confidence, you may feel weak. But I learned, I, I was taught that at that moment, there is always somebody weaker than you. Your daughter, a refugee, that brings you back to the road of the strength of, of soul. And thank you.